Well, this cave lake reminds us of the water of life. However, the cave may seem to be a hot spot for tourists. The French term for water of life is eau de vie. The cave is so dark we only have those lights for us to see each other with. But what about those icicle-like things hanging from the cave ceiling? It's called stalactite, Lucy. A tapering structure hanging like an icicle from the roof of a cave, formed of calcium salts deposited by dripping water. Is it drinkable? No. It is not drinkable. The same goes for the oceans, such as the Atlantic and the Pacific. Are you sure this cave is dangerous? I hit my Tibetan Mastiff head once and nearly scalped my hair off. Angus Scattergood did not like that when I scalped my hair. Yes it may become dangerous at times, Bodhi. It could be a dangerous place for us to be if we are not careful. After Bodhi, Angela, and the others had flown, they left Natural Bridge to go to Winchester. Let's see what happens next. Well, that was fun. Now to head to Angela and Bodhi's hometown. I have the wheel. Ben, Hank, and Ginger, do you have everything set for the ride there? I do Tom. Indeed, I have my binder set and ready. Not losing my cool and ready to play on my Nintendo 3DS XL. Good. Now let's go and follow Angela. Well, this is the last leg of the trip. We're going to have dinner when we get to me and Bodhi's mom and dad's house in my hometown that I always call home. So no begging, no asking, nothing. Estimated driving time. 2 hours and 16 minutes. Estimated arrival time. 7.21 p.m. Merge onto Interstate 81 South towards Winchester. Now that I've done that, let's talk about last meal requests in prisons in our country. Anyone in my car want to request a convicted death row inmate with his or her last meal request? Danny Rowling. I have read the novel, The Gainesville Ripper, by author Amy Rowland. Did you enjoy the book? Yeah. Anyways. Danny Rowling was convicted of serial murder, he is nicknamed the Gainesville Ripper, like in the novel written by author Amy Rowland in 2006, he was executed via lethal injection. For his last meal before his execution, he requested for lobster tail, butterfly shrimp, baked potato, strawberry cheesecake, and sweet tea. I love those foods very much. Riff, one of my friends in DMV class, said he loved them so much he wants more. How about Dennis Wayne Bagwell? Dennis Wayne Bagwell was sentenced to death via lethal injection in 2005 in the state of Texas for mass murder. Don't copy the song by AFI or else the third party song company will sue you for this act. Don't do that. That is just not necessary. What did he request for his last meal? Medium layer steak with a one steak sauce, fried chicken breasts and thighs, BBQ ribs, french fries onion rings, bacon, scrambled eggs with onions, fried potatoes with onions, sliced tomatoes, salad with ranch dressing, two hamburgers, peach pie, and others. Now that's just fattening. Just ask Griff, he knows. How about Charles Russell Rhines? Well Dama, Charles Russell Rhines was executed via lethal injection in the state of South Dakota in 2019, which is last year, but still, a great one for murder charges. Well, what did he eat for his last meal? For his last meal he requested the following, fried chicken, and talap or musk melon, lefts, which is a Norwegian flatbread, yogurt, both strawberry and cherry, butter, black licorice, cookies and cream ice cream, root beer, coffee with cream and sugar. Whoa! That is too fattening. Just ask Riff, he knows. Okay. How about Gary Carl Simmons Jr.? If that's what you want. Gary Carl Simmons Jr. is executed via lethal injection in 2012, which is supposed to mean doomsday, but it never happened, in the state of Mississippi for murder charges. What did he eat? A very long list of food items. One Pizza Hut medium super supreme deep dish pizza with double portions of mushrooms, onions, jalapeno peppers, and pepperoni. A second pizza with three cheeses, olives, bell pepper, tomato, garlic, and Italian sausage. 10 8-ounce packs of parmesan cheese, 10 8-ounce packs of ranch dressing, one family-size bag of Doritos nacho cheese flavor, 8 ounces of jalapeno nacho cheese, 4 ounces sliced jalapenos, 2 large strawberry shakes, 2 20-ounce cherry cokes. 
one supersize order of McDonald's fries with extra ketchup and mayonnaise, and two pints of strawberry ice cream. He consumed about half of the meal. And Riff from K95 ate the second half of Gary's meal. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Can you draw Lawrence Russell Brewer next? Yes, I can. Lawrence Russell Brewer was executed in the state of Texas in 2011 via lethal injection for murder charges. What did he eat? It's a long list. Two chicken fried steaks smothered in gravy with sliced onions, a triple meat bacon cheeseburger with fixings on the side, a cheese omelet with ground beef, tomatoes, onions, bell peppers and gelapinous. A large bowl of fried okra with ketchup. One pound of barbecue with half a loaf of white bread, three fajitas with fixings, a meat lovers pizza, three root beers, one pint of blue bell vanilla ice cream, and a slab of peanut butter fudge with crushed peanuts. Brewer's request was granted, but he refused the meal when it arrived saying that he was simply not hungry, prompting Texas to stop granting last meal requests to condemned inmates. <coughs> Whoa. That was a close one. Becca, you were scared when I almost hit a Winner Enterprises semi-truck before you told me Riff from K958 Brewers requested me land stinking up the bathroom at their studio. Jeez. Anyways, Dharma, your turn to tell me a condemned death row inmate. How about Marion Albert Prout, a spree killer? That's a good one, Dharma, since it is so emotional. Marion Albert Prout was executed via lethal injection for spree killing charges in 1999 in the state of Arkansas. What did he eat? His foods as follows, a stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut, four Burger King Whoppers, a large order of French fries, three two-liter bottles of Pepsi, a bucket of ice, a bottle of ketchup, salt, fried eggplant, fried squash, fried okra, and a pecan pie. In an interview prior to his execution date, he said he was going to share his last meal with another inmate who was going to be executed the same day. He went on to say he originally wanted to have a roast duck for his last meal, but declined because he felt the prison would not cook it. That was so emotional for us to hear before the new millennium happened in 2000. Well that can make us cry, but it won't because we are on the road. How about Miguel Richardson? Good. Miguel Richardson was executed in 2001, when at the time Tailsland became a teenager at the age of 13, via lethal injection for murder charges. What did he eat beforehand? A long list of foods, a chocolate birthday cake with February 23, 1990, his wedding and marriage date, written on top and seven pink candles, one coconut, kiwi fruit juice, one mango, grapes, lettuce, cottage cheese, peaches, one banana, one apple, chef salad without meat and with Thousand Island dressing, fruit salad, cheese, and tomato slices. Note, the date, February 23, 1990, is his wedding date for Miguel Richardson and his wife, name unknown. Just ask him, but he's not there permanently. How about Odell Barnes? If that's what you want. Odell Barnes was executed via lethal injection in Texas in 2000, which is the new millennium. He requested for justice, equality, and world peace as his final meal. That seemed wacky at times, but you get the answer and message. How about Peter J. Miniel? Okay. Peter J. Miniel was executed via lethal injection in Texas in 2004 for murder charges. What did he eat? A long list of things. 20 beef tacos. 20 beef enchiladas, 2 double cheeseburgers, a pizza with gelapinous, fried chicken, spaghetti with salt, half of a chocolate cake, half of a vanilla cake, cookies and cream ice cream, caramel pecan fudge ice cream, a small fruit cake, 2 Cokes, 2 Pepsis, 2 root beers, and 2 glasses of orange juice. Seems fattening to Peter J. Miniel. Just ask Griff from K95, he knows how to gain weight rather than lose weight. Also, I need to tell him to go on a diet. What about Rainy Bethea? Rainy Bethea is executed in the state of Kentucky, being the last person executed in public by hanging in America, in 1936, in which G. Co. started service, for murder and one other charge, in which I cannot say it because of my language. What did Rainy eat? Not much. Fried chicken, pork chops, mashed potatoes, 
pickled cucumbers, cornbread, lemon pie, and ice cream. And that's the only food he ate before being executed. No drinks or anything. That's a good meal for Rainy, but fattening. Just ask Griff, he knows. Could you do Richard Kowili next? Sure. Richard Kowili is executed in 2008 in the state of Ohio for a couple charges against him via lethal injection. But sadly, clemency appeal based on his being too overweight for lethal injection drugs to work on him properly. What did he eat? Not that much. T-bone steak with a one sauce, onion rings, french fries, four eggs over easy, toast with butter, hash browns, a pint of Rocky Road ice cream, a Mountain Dew soft drink and authentic their claw pastries. Fattening for Richard, isn't it? Yes, but don't tell Riff from K95 for this. How about Robert Alton Harris? Okay Dama, this is the last one before we reach my house. Robert Alton Harris was convicted of murder in the state of California in 1992. He was executed via a gas chamber. Well, you can take the easy way out in a garage if you are extremely depressed. What did he eat beforehand? Well, not much, actually. A 21-piece bucket of KFC, two large Domino's pizzas with no anchovies, ice cream, a bag of jelly beans, a six-pack of Pepsi, and a pack of Camel cigarettes. The pizza was actually a tombstone pizza per Vernal Crittenden's orders. Crittenden worked at the prison and was responsible for dealing with the condemned person before his execution. Well, having a pack of camel cigarettes with your last meal in prison while being convicted for murder is just wrong. You need to quit smoking. Yeah, permanently. It's Riff from K95. Let me answer it via the hands-free speaker. Hello. Hello, guys. It's James Harrison Richards III, also known as Riff. I want to let you know that I've had diarrhea in the bathroom two dozen times after eating the second half of a convicted prisoner's meal and ate all of Mr. Brewer's meal after his refusal. And if you threaten me to get fat, have explosive diarrhea, and stink up the studio bathroom again, I will have me, Gershwin, Theo, Ella, and Maxine all get you for this. Our toilet will not get clogged anymore, you know. Okay, okay, Riff. We know not to get you fat again. And drink clots of water. You will feel hydrated afterwards. I am sorry for yelling at you over the phone. I just wanting to get your attention. I didn't mean to warn you like that. And you almost made us get into an accident just by yelling at us over the speaker like this. Little Miss Perfect doesn't like that at all. Stay healthy, eat and drink the right things, and you will lose weight in no time. Riff, I'll talk to you later. Okay, Angela, I will. Bye. You have reached your destination. Here we are. Hello, Hello Angela, Angela and Betty. Betty. Hello, Hello guys. guys. Mom, Dad, may I introduce you to Becca Sparkles? She is new to our party. Hi, Hi Becca. Becca. Hello. Okay, now that Becca, our newest member to our party, is introduced to my parents, Malachi and Kiara, let's get our stuff from our car, go inside, unpack, have dinner, and do a lot of fun stuff. Also, we are staying here for the rest of the pandemic. This concludes the G-Day road trip from Stepford to Winchester. Note, they are all staying here for the rest of the coronavirus pandemic.